Glory to Jesus. Today, um, I want to talk to us about the blessings of sacrificial thanksgiving. The blessings of sacrificial thanksgiving. You know, um, there's a lot of religion, especially in the Southeast. There are a lot of things that we do just for the sake of doing it. As I was talking in the conference yesterday about syncretism. You know, there's a lot of religion, there's a lot of things we do just for doing sake with little or no understanding. And the problem with that is that when you do things with little or no understanding, you get little or no benefit from it. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that we have that we have made the word of God of no effect through our words, through our tradition. I hear what I'm saying. So thanksgiving is not meant to be a tradition. It's meant to be a revelation. Tell your neighbor, thanksgiving should not be a tradition. It should be what? Say it again. Thanksgiving should not be a tradition. It should be what? A revelation. That's why it's in the south. I saw so sometimes on Thanksgiving service, some people don't come to church. You know, we have a lot of reasons. I don't have the right clothes to wear. I don't have money, and all kinds of things that people do. It's because of lack of what revelation. But today, I trust that God is going to give us revelation of Thanksgiving, and especially of sacrificial Thanksgiving in Jesus' name. So let's start Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2. Can we read it together? I want to go. It is good. It is a what? A good thing to what? To give thanks. Can we read it? One to go together. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. And to pray, sing praises to his name on earth. Number two, verse two, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Tell me what it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. And he said you have to do it both in the morning and in the world. So it's not a once a year thing. Or twice a year thing. It should be a lifestyle. Tell you about Thanksgiving should be your lifestyle. Say it again. Thanksgiving should be your lifestyle. Say the third time so you can say Thanksgiving should be what? Lifestyle. It is good to give thanks. Thanksgiving is a habit to form. We must praise and thank God for all that He has done for us. Is a habit. Tell your neighbor should be a habit too. It should not be a ceremony. It should be what? A habit. We must learn to count our blessings and name them what? One by one. You know, while we are thanking God, I, I, I just remember, I don't know why I remember a lot of women that are put to bed this year in this church and some that were related to us. Some there were a lot of challenges. That we thought we'd lose the baby. I remember with my brother doing a lot of for the child. Baby had to come out earlier than. But the baby come out, came out and was very normal. Did not need any oxygen or anything. We are shocked. So are you sure these people calculated the EGA very well? You know? Someone said it is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous what? He had the testimony of Pastor Kuro's wife. A baby without amniotic fluid. How the baby was surviving, nobody knew. And the baby came out and was very, very what? Someone said, It is the Lord's doing, you know? and it is marvelous what? Also, had another sister that the blood pressure was high even before delivery. And towards the time of, you know, it was bad. But baby came out fine, mother came out fine, no issues. Tell your neighbor again, it is the Lord's doing, Lord. And it is marvelous, what? So, if 
if you don't count your blessings, you will not remember. Because the devil has this thing, I don't know why, of making us ungrateful. He will put your eyes on the bad things, on the things that went wrong, on the things that have not yet happened. And he will not allow you to see the things that God has done. My dear, if you are alive in Nigeria, hmm, on this day, you have every reason to give God what? Touch your neighbor, say, are you alive? This thing I'm touching, is he alive? <laughs> because if I be touching something like that, what's the body? This thing is he alive? <laughs> and, in, and in Nigeria, you have not Japan. You know, there are two types of Japan Japan abroad and Japan out of life. You are still here. <laughs> tell your neighbor, you have enough reason to thank God. Tell your neighbor, don't tell me you don't have reason to thank God. Though. Ah! Some of us know we have died finish. But we are here. And we are still flourishing. Association of Funding Apa Fuel. Eh? If you know you put fuel in your car, raise your hand. Wave your hand to Jesus. You have enough reason to what? Remember when I started putting fuel in my car, the tank was still red. I was wondering whether the fuel gauge has a problem. Or the free station people have done one thing. And we are still here. Nigeria is meant to give national thanksgiving. And we need to do national work. And we have survived 2023. National thanksgiving. And everybody said amen. amen. With all the challenges, whether insecurity, kidnapping, all the problems, God has kept us. So, even if you don't have money in your pocket, God has kept you. You have enough reason. Tell your neighbor again, you have enough reason to give God thanks. So, you must learn. So, you see, this Thanksgiving service is not where it Thanksgiving actually starts today. It continues to the end of what? Can someone hear what I'm saying? Both as a church and as individual, because some of us that are salary earners, maybe you don't even afford to thank God with. It's not a ceremony. It's, it's a lifestyle. Someone says it's a lifestyle. Don't end this year without thanking God. But the test it doesn't start with giving. It starts with your mouth. Count your words. Yes. I wish somebody should even start some a Thanksgiving challenge from today to the end of the year. Start naming it. Naming it. Right? Get a book. Open a Thanksgiving journal. Start writing. Start from January. January 1st. Start writing. For me, January 2nd. Those that were my team, we were even inside one village doing crusades. January 2nd, that's how my year started. The crusades. And that place, when we passed our way to the village, the military people, they started telling us, no, 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 because where we are going, <laughs> that place, they were sorry for us. On general, I told God, if anything happens to me, I said, this is the way I started my year. Going to preach inside one place that there's a lot of chaos. But that's how the case started for me. And we've been on the road preaching in different cities, in different meetings, and God has been faithful. I think we should give God some praise. Can we be praising to praise God? We had our miracle service morning going back to back every month. And God has been faithful. So many people healed. So many people deliver, we run healing schools, we run healing services in different churches, online, and so many lives have been touched. God has been with them. all kinds of programs we've run this year to touch lives. And God has supplied both resources, human and material resources, and God has blessed them. And apart from that, so many lives have been touched. One more time, can we give God some praise? Can we give Him some praise? Can you join me to give God some praise? Hallelujah. Praise God. So we must learn to count our blessings and what? Name them one by one. And as the sun singers did, and it will what? Surprise you and the multitude of what God has done. So, Thanksgiving is meant to be a habit. We should do it daily. Someone say daily. daily. Morning, afternoon, 
the night and through the day, you wake up, you thank God for life. You go through the day, you thank Him. In the day, you thank Him for being with you. In the evening, you thank Him. In the night, you thank Him. You have challenges, you thank Him. You have breakthroughs, you thank Him. You should thank Him every week. At the beginning of the week, that's what we do on Sunday. We come to church to what? To thank Him for last week. Every Saturday, as a Saturday ends, don't go to sleep without that. Thank God for the day. That should be the last thing you do. Don't ever go to sleep with complaints. Tell everyone, don't go to sleep with complaints. Because if you do what you wake up with, it's my gray headache. Go to sleep with what? Then <laughs> you wake up with unusual breakthroughs. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. That's why, you see, Peter says, they say, cast all your cares what on the Lord. Before you go to sleep, take everything, drop it before him. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him for the ones he has not been done and hand everything over to him and sleep like what he did. Part of the reason why many of us have nightmares is not because any witch is chasing you. It's what you are thinking before you slept. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, he is the worry that you are worrying before you step. That's what continued in your dream. Has it happened to you before? When we are taking jam, we used to solve a lot of mathematics. Sometimes you will be re studying and go to bed. What happens in the sleep? You continue solving it in your dream. Uh, so is that all resolved problem that has continued in your dream? Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Tell everybody, let to cast all your cares on God. So you must learn to thank him weekly. You must learn to thank him monthly. At the end of the month, thank him. As a church, we have developed it as a habit. In fact, it was a command that God gave us, and it was two years ago. At the end of each month, come and thank him for all that he has done, for preserving you, for protecting you, for providing for you. Tell you about thanksgiving should be a habit. Your habits. Also, quarterly at the end of every quarter, I come and thank you. At the middle of the year, come and thank you. That's why we have a big year Thanksgiving year. Not just because we have need, but so that we can come and thank you. At the end of the year, like we have come now and we're to the end of the year, come and what? Thank him for the year, for all that he has done. At special occasions like your birthdays, you know, many times, birthdays, many of us are not interested in going to take selfies, have parties, blow money. How many of us actually wake up and thank God for life? Because that life you have, you didn't give it to yourself. Are you aware? Hello, are you aware? That whole city you are pretty, you didn't buy it. Are you aware? If it's based on, you know, um, affordability, rich people will not be dying. You know what I'm saying? Rich people will not be what? Strong people will not be dying. You know, the former head of state of this country that terrorized this country, you know, used to wear dark glasses, so you know what I'm talking about. I read the comment uh, the commentary of one of the, I think it was Julio Bunda, one of the radio um, presenters, about how the man was buried. He was called to the villa to accompany the team that went to take him. You know, he said something that was shocking. He said that day, the man, he just wrapped him in a mat. You know how our cousins do it. There was nothing special. He said, in fact, initially, when they put the body was in the luggage compartment of the aircraft, it was somebody that had to say, please, this is a former head of state. Give him some respect. They now have to bring the body into where they were just kept it on the chair and from that time they'll be toppled the body will fall off and fall down they'll have to carry that put back up and he was asking himself is this the man that terrorized the whole nation he can't even get up he can't even move his body he said that day he had to rethink about life had to rethink about life Several times they will fall off the, 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 the chair or couch, they will carry it. So himself, that was now a report, that was now the one carrying the body. Because amazingly, all those psycho fans, all those people that were around, nobody was even there to protect the body of the man that they may see in his presence. That's how life is. So, 
oxygen you are breathing. It is God that is giving it to you. It's not because you're wise. It's not because you are strong. That's why throughout your life you must acknowledge your maker. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? Because whether you like it or not, at the end of this life, you are going to go back and meet your God. You are going to meet your maker. And you are going to account for this life that he has leads to you. Is somebody hearing if you're hearing me, so I'm hearing you. So instead of waiting to you die, why don't you acknowledge him every day? Wake up in the morning and thank him for his steadfast love. As I like that song, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never to always remember thanksgiving shows that we are grateful for all that God has done for us and when we thank him he will do more for peace you will multiply it we thank you for provision no matter how small you multiply it so stop focusing on what you don't have thank god for what you have received and you will multiply it to overshadow what there is if you're hearing me sound hearing how do we thank god number one is with words words of appreciation in our communication with him as we commune as we fellowship with him as we pray even as we talk to men let your world be full of thanksgiving i noticed something about the, the people that wrote the epistles paul and peter they will always start with thanksgiving and what end with thanksgiving and in between you will see even when they are praying you see paul say i give thanks to god you begin to mention a lot of things. Start your prayer with 
thanksgiving. End it with what? Thanksgiving. The Bible said that we should enter his presence with what? His gates with what? Thanksgiving. You know, many of the prayers you are praying were in the outer court, you are not heard. Because the door to the gates, the, the key to the gates is what? Many of us never even got into the compound where outside lecturing God on what he should do. No, start with thanksgiving. Thank him for the ones he has done here. Thank him for who he is. Thank him for what he has made you. And then the door will open. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. So with what? Some say with words. Some say with words. Words of what? Appreciation. Number two, with testimonies. Testify before the brethren. Tell people of what God has done. This morning, something funny happened. And I, I didn't know what I to say. You know, it looks, it looks simple, but it's not simple. Because I'm a doctor. You know, I woke up in the morning while we were praying. I was praying. I had this feeling there's, there's a container we put water in. But I just, you know, I like arranging things. So, Sometimes even when I'm praying, I just see something that's not arranged. I'll just move it. So <laughs> I don't know how to is a is a I don't know what is that thing, but that's me. So I pushed the container. So I looked at I, when I was still praying and dancing, I was dancing, you know. I still came and saw I saw something I thought was a cockroach. So I got my slippers. And I tried to kill the thing. The thing moved fast, and I moved fast, and I killed it. And I looked. I said, that's what they call it. And I looked closer. It was a big scorpion. Very big scorpion. I've not seen that side of scorpion in my life. Big and black. I was confused. We're on the first floor. And this is inside my bedroom. It's not maybe in the toilet, you know, sometimes they go through the sewers. It's not outside. This is inside my bedroom. And it's that bedroom from this interior or stuff. And where it is not close to bed, there are shoes or maybe say somebody that brought it in. So I can't explain how that thing got there. So I just began to thank God. Thank you, Lord, for making me to move this thing. Thank you, Lord, for making me to decide to kill it. I left it as all these things, all these cockroaches. If you see the long tail, and the day before, I and my children were right there playing games in the house, building things on the floor. We don't know when that thing came in. What if it was when we were playing and it came close? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been stung by a scorpion before? Yes, you will remember the day you were born. And you will wish you were dead. <laughs> the pain is crazy. It's crazy. There are patients that you actually have to sedate. There are some that you have to give little okay, you know, and exercise to, for the pain to go down. So maybe this morning there's a person who not come to church. What happened? He was stung. Go for it. Someone say, Go for the door. But God, our God neither slumbers nor what? He watches over us. Is that something to thank God for? You don't know. What you know is the one you saw. You don't know what prevented. You don't know. You don't know. Those of us that travel, many times you pass a point after a crop has hit the place. Many times you pass a point, then a drop somersaults. You don't know. Praise the Lord. So you must learn to testify. And whenever God does it, what should you do? Testify. Because testimony gives glory to God. Testimony gives the faith of someone else. You know that God can also do the same thing in the world. But one thing about testimony is that testimonies multiply testimonies. Anything you testify about, you see more of it. I hear what I'm saying. I'm in the healing ministry. Any miracle you talk more about is the miracle you keep seeing. So you must learn to testify. So as you leave this meeting today, go and tell somebody about something God has done for you this month. I hear what I'm saying. 
and this year. Don't be ungrateful. Tell your neighbor, don't be ungrateful. Learn to do what? Testify. So we test with our testimonies before the brethren, before all that. Even if you're not in church, before you go So the first person I told, I told my wife. Then after telling my wife, I said, okay. I said, I know she would tell the children. So I said, let me just be calm and behave. And I was like, no, this is something great though. At least, at least my Thanksgiving service has started. So I took it on like me. I posted it on the church page so people can see what God has done. I don't know what the devil has planned for you this year. I say it will not come to pass. Amen. I say it will not come to pass. Amen. I say God is going to embarrass the enemy. Amen. I say God is going to embarrass the enemy. Amen. You will see. No matter what it comes to whether native doctor or whatever, God is going to embarrass the enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. So thank you with testimonies. Thank you with singing, with praise, with worship. With adoration, that's how you thank God. So, when it's time to thank God, don't be tired. Throw away that your tiredness. Don't be decent. Throw away that your decency. Somebody hear what I'm saying? It's not the fruit of the spirit. Be as ravenous as possible, as crazy as possible. If somebody hear what I'm saying, you will see what God will do. And everybody say Amen. amen. So we sing Him, we praise, we worship, we adoration, both personally and in groups. Both in church and beyond. Number four, thank you with dancing. Someone say with dancing, oh. Yes. Ah, that's how to thank God. That's why I'm thanking you. Just stand like you could do. You are proud. And your pride has reached the terrible proportions. Humble yourself and dance. Tell them, oh, humble yourself and dance, oh. Yes. Humble yourself and dance. I don't know how to dance. Dance freestyle. <laughs> Someone say freestyle. Style. Freestyle needs no style. Every style is what? Style. No one has only learned to that. And that dancing in music is so good. Jumping up. All wrong, can't be. Money, 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 I remember when, you know, no matter, even if you don't, you know, fact, you can't say you don't have anything for something. The good man said there was a time that he was so poor, he had nothing to give in the offering. But he, he knows that the Bible says, maybe you can put it up in Exodus chapter 23. He said that when we appear before God, he said three times you should appear before God every year. That's the truth. He said, and each time God appear before him was empty and dead. Always come with something. So he knew that he can't come before God. And you know what he did? He tore his two buttons and twisted off him. Off him. But I'm not asking you to put buttons in an offering. But it's an attitude. Someone says it's an attitude. That you should not come before God was. I remember one time in the house. I was so broke. I had nothing. I looked at the forgive that I had fighting. I had a tie clip. I took it and put it off in box. And God has a sense of humor. I bought many tight grips, good measure, press down, shake it together. So God told me, see, I can multiply tightly. What if you put more money? <laughs> Someone shouts, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must have something to what? To give. I remember a time that Thanksgiving like this, I'll not have anything to do. You know what I'll do? I'll go and pack all the, there are some new plates and what every people bought for me, I've not used. I'll carry it. I'm give it on the other. And that's it. Because you should not appear before God or what? Because what shows your gratitude is your substance. Someone say your substance. I would say in Proverbs 3, verse 9, that we should honor God with our what? In our substance. Your honor is not complete until there is what? Substance. Find a way, go out of your way, think. There will be times fans in this service, I will think and take nothing. I'll stand free for friends to come. Please, I don't have time to give of it. Please send me some money. Or I will pray, I will pray. And any money that enters my hand, like what happened on Friday, there's an amount of people to thank God. I'm talking to the Lord. 
and peer somewhere. I've been inside somewhere they are not sending honorarium peer, they say land there. I carried it by that, transferred it straight into the Thanksgiving account so that my hand will not mistakenly touch it. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Say I'm hearing. And if you are sincere with God, you will know your heart what you should thank God with. I hear what I'm saying. The Bible says concerning Hezekiah, what was problem says Hezekiah's problem? The Bible says, and Hezekiah rendered not to the Lord according to all his words. So he thanked God, but not in proportion with what God has done for him. And God allowed Babylonians to come in and wipe out his legacy. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you're hearing, say I'm hearing. So you must thank God proportionately. You must thank Him gratefully. And everybody say amen. amen. So with giving, with cash, with kinds, with equipment, for instance, you come to church, look for what the church needs. You give food stuff, animals, clothes, shoes, cars, houses, lands. We should start thanking God with land and documents. Thank God with houses. Father, you drop house key. That's the real Thanksgiving. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? She they can you drop land. And whatever it is you drop will multiply. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Is it when you are trying to you know, manage your Thanksgiving, just keep one thing for you are robbing yourself? Because the Bible says the law about giving in Luke chapter 6 is that whatever you give, you will receive a good measure. Somebody say a good measure. Good measure. Someone say press down. Someone says shaking together and what? Running over. God determines the profit margin. You determine the multiplication rate by what you give. So, so when you come for Thanksgiving, do it with some sense. Number one, you are coming to show God gratitude because what is the sign that you are grateful? The amount of value. Someone say the amount of value that you bring to God. That is, that is what shows that you are grateful. The amount of value. That's why this year we are asking people to give sacrificially. Someone say sacrificially. Someone say sacrificially. Give something that has great worth value. And you will see God do some unusual things for you. And everybody say amen. If you're here, say I'm here. Who should you thank? When we come for Thanksgiving services like this, I, I wish I had the time, but go back and read the Genome chapter 16 from verse 10 to 17. Number one, at the end of the year, like this, you should thank God. That's the number one person to thank. For life, for health, for vitality. Number two, thank your pastors, your leaders, those that be a blessing to you spiritually. Thank them. That's why we always have a Thanksgiving service. Then the next Sunday is our pastor's appreciation. Come and thank the men and the women of God that God has used to bless you. We have labored over you this year. Somebody say amen. Oh. amen. Have we labored? Yes, I mean, you, you know we have labored because if you measure the number of the amount of trouble you have given us mm-hmm. and then multiply by the number of members, divide it by two. That is the minimum level of the wahala we have had. And everybody said amen, amen. You know, people know how to call pastors at 12 midnight, call pastors at 1 a.m. They believe it's their rights. But when it's time to thank God, they don't believe it's the pastor's rights. So that same way you have disturbed us, that's the same way you should thank us. And everybody said amen, amen. Everybody said amen, amen. There's no way I've not gone. You see, I'm not afraid of robbers. I've gone out by 2 a.m., 3 a.m. to hospitals. To all kinds of places. I've been called at crazy times, separating fights to the end. Because Yaba Tawa said, I'm not going to the end. The wife is outside begging the man to come inside. There's one. I won't say where he is now. He's watching. He might be watching. The wife in chase, under the way, uncompleted duty. Nina by now, I'll judge and referee. Because he said, I'll pick food. I'll call the wife. I'll call the wife. I'll call the wife. I'll Ten inches from the gate, I'll call the guy and tell him also. And after the end of the year, you will not thank me. They are very hungry. 
happy. Even God will not be happy with you. Master, my sister, my sister's uncle, brother's sister, is in labor in Kafanja. What is my business? Did, you, did she tell me where she took him? What is my business? She's about to perform the baby. One head, part of the head is out. The remaining, the remaining part. Man of God, pray. <laughs> I will pray. Pastor, off for one day. Bema, bema, bema. Bema. Madura, Madura, Madura. I will be Madura. After Madura, end of the year, remember to come and say what? He sustains that relationship. He makes the man happy with his job. You know, in America, over 10,000 pastors resign every day, every year. Every year, in fact, uh, if a friend of mine that is one of mine that's in America, he said a church he went to, he just finished enjoying the service. They said he sent forth, so he was wondering, sent forth for the pastor. He thought maybe the man is going to a higher assignment. They said no, the man is resigning from pastor, he's going back to business. He can't move here. The guy was shocked. He has never heard that kind of thing. You know, Nigerians we are very spiritual. I said, he is resigning from pastoring, he's going back to business, he's tired. And that's how over 10,000 every year. It was not easy to be a pastor. Amen. You're a doctor, you're a pastor, you're a lawyer, you're a marriage counselor, you're even police, all of them, only you. Somebody's can miss, they will call you. Why are you calling me? Am I a police? Pastor, pray for the car and the thieves to be arrested. <laughs> Someone will be kidnapped, they are calling Pastor. Why are you calling? <laughs> Am I a JTF? And at the end of the year, you don't remember to thank me. Even you know it's not good. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor, learn to say thank you. To all those that have been a blessing to you. Also, learn to bless your parents that are giving birth to you. No matter how they are behaving, they might be pooping on their pampas, they might be weary, they might be scattering things. They are still, if not for them, you will not be here. Tell your neighbor, if not for them, you will not be one here. They give you life. Remember to do what? Them. My mommy is a witch. No problem. It's that witch that gave birth to you. Without that witch, you will not be here. Because your mommy is the entry point of you into this world. True or false? And uh, with her witch is it? Thank her. I take my money to shine. Let her take it. Thank her. When the money gets to shine, you to tell where it's coming from. If somebody hear what I'm saying, if you hear, I'm saying I'm hearing though. Hear what happened that have influenced you, teachers, your mentors, your bosses, your friends, at this end of the year? Remember them and thank them. My Nikki and Nikki and God, my Omega. Finally, remember to honor the poor, take care of the poor. Those both within and outside the church, those that cannot afford it. When you are giving to the poor, you are thanking God for preserving you and for lifting you. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? And you will never go down. And everybody say, Amen. What's the power of thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is so powerful that it can change the entire course of a man's life for the better. Ingratitude also is very powerful. It can also change a man's life for the worse. Gratitude always increases your altitude. Ingratitude limits both your latitude and your altitude. Now, there are seven major blessings of empowerment of, or empowerments of thanksgiving. I'm just going to mention them because of time. And give you the scriptures, you can go and study them. Praise the Lord. Number one, thanksgiving brings wholeness, all round restoration. Please write it down. Remember the story of the Samaritan leper. Jesus healed ten lepers, and only one came back. The interesting thing is that Jesus knew how many that were healed. So any blessing God blesses you, He's aware. He's aware of that job. He's aware of that contract. He's expecting you to come and do what? Thank you for it. He asks, were they not ten? 
that we are healed. We are what? I'm sure this time giving service, God is asking, where is your okay? Where is that that, that I gave job? Where is that that I got married? Where is, you know, Chukwe Mecca that I delivered from accident? God is expecting us to come and thank Him. Everybody that has been healed this year, God is expecting to come and thank Him. I hear what I'm saying. If you're hearing me, say I'm hearing. And it always brings wholeness. In Luke chapter 17, verse 12, when the man came and thanked Jesus, Jesus said, Go, thy faith has made thee what? Go. Everything is lost. The fingers, they lost. His sexual organs, his relationship with his family, his business, these are things that leprosy destroyed. They were all restored. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That is why most times, no many of you get healed and you departure, keep it to yourself. You are robbing yourself. Because even if it's 30% that you are healed, when you come, God completes it to what? 100%. I hear what I'm saying. When I tell you, it's all complete. And even if it's 100% physical, there are other things that you lost psychologically, you know, jobs and everything. God feels those things when we thank God. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. So if God has healed you this year, you are owing God thanksgiving. Tell everybody, God has healed you this year. You are owing God thanksgiving, no? You're also owing, if God used us to minister in it, you're also owing us. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus said, Go and show yourself to the priest. That one is for God. But they came back, the man came back and honored the man that God used. I hear what I'm saying. So God expects you both to honor you and to honor the human vessels that He has what He has used. And it's those human vessels that God will use to proclaim that person of wholeness. And everybody said, Amen. Number two, Thanksgiving brings multiplication. It's a yeast, it brings miraculous increase. When they had five loaves and two fishes, Jesus thanked God in John chapter 6, verse 11 to 13, and it multiplied to feed 5,000 people with 12 baskets left over. So it's multiplication. When they had, I think it was seven loaves and some fish, God multiplied it in the book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 32, to feed 4,000 people. Thanksgiving always brings multiplication. If you give God anything, or you present anything to Him with thanksgiving, He will multiply it. Tell your neighbor, He will multiply it. So what do you do? Out of the things that God has placed, no matter how they will pick some part of it. Today, this week, between now and Sunday, between now and the end of the year, whenever you get the substance, bring it to God. Say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for this job you are giving me. From this job, I've brought this, and he will multiply it. Tell everybody he will multiply it. Too. Tell everybody he will multiply it. I found out, you know, that is why many times some of them will give sacrificial. But sometimes I just look at something, it's not enough. The follower said, When what you don't have is enough, when you have what you have is not enough to meet your need, it becomes your word, your seed. Even this morning, I did it. There were things I was meant to give. I looked at what I had in the account. I say this is can't even solve my problem. So it's better I just thank God the way I want to thank God. Let God take care of the rest. So there's somebody here you are struggling. I don't have enough to give. No. Give it to God. God will multiply it and take care of you. And everybody say the amen, no. Amen. It's something he has been doing. He did it for the widow of Seraphim. It's something he has been doing. If you are hearing me, Sam, hearing you. Amen. Number three, Thanksgiving brings establishment consolidation and longevity for instance you are in an office you have gotten a job you've gotten a promotion go and thank god for that promotion let's form this happen when you have a major breakthrough like your business might have a wonderful year come and thank god you had an appointment into an office come and thank god if somebody hear what i'm saying you get a new position come and thank god god will consolidate it tell you god will consolidate it too David was thankful and he decided to build God a house. And God established his throne. If you look second Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 to 16, please note these scriptures. I want you to this week is a week of Thanksgiving. Tell everybody this week is a week of Thanksgiving. So what I'm giving you is Bible study for the week. When you finish studying it, maybe you might not have reason to thank, you will see reasons. And if you have thanked, you will get the blessings. As you think, go back and claim these things. I hear what I'm saying. That's why I'm making them available. Okay. 
He thanked God by building me in a house. He said, it's not possible for me to live in palace and God is living in tents. No. Even when they told him you should not build it, that your hand is filled with blood, he still provided the resources. And what was the result? God established this truth. God said, there will be no body that will sit on this truth except somebody from your lineage. If somebody hear what I'm saying, if you're hearing sound, hear it. Number four, Thanksgiving silences controversies. It deals with opposition and settles everything that speaks against us. Solomon, David's son, was made king. He had a lot of people that were against him. She married, you know, the elder brother, so many people that wanted to kill him. What did the man do? He went to God's altar and smoked 1,000 one of him, 1,000. Someone say 1,000. And that night, God came. You know, there are some type of things you give. You know, some of us don't know how to deal with controversies. They want to take my job. I don't know what to do. Who should I call? How are you sure that person will call? Can help me? How do you settle controversy? Someone says sacrifice. Someone says sacrificial thanksgiving. Take a healthy sacrifice. Slaughter it. Slaughter it. It is a controversy over your life. Someone is threatening you. You know, people are funny. I'm not kidding. Nobody took my name to the chief doctor. What would they use in that? It's not a sacrifice. It's not a sacrifice. What do you do? Give a higher sacrifice. It will silence that sacrifice. If somebody hear what I'm saying, they are threatening to take my job. No. Carry like, like Solomon, 1,000 watt on offering. Go and drop it on that wall. I remember Pastor said when they told him the wife would have CS in those days and he didn't want that was their first pregnancy. He said, so if she start with CS, she will continue. You know what he did? He said he calculated the money for the CS. How much it would cost. Carry it and went and dropped it on the altar. Say, God, you are Jehovah Rapha, you are the greatest doctor. I will not give this to the doctor. I will give it to you. And guess what? The baby behaved itself. Just don't. And came out peacefully. Tap your neighbor said there's a way to deal with controversies. It's with sacrificial word thanksgiving. 2024 is very pregnant. I want your way more gamu. More gamu okay. More gamu why? More gamu okay. More gamu ri. More gamu afo. You can determine that year for yourself by sacrificial word. Settle things for yourself. Tell your neighbor, settle things for yourself. Settle it. Just settle it. Just settle it. That's how I start my My year starts in this. I settle it. Just settle it. And the year sorts itself out. He slaughtered that thing. And God came and said, What do you want? And at the end, God gave him wisdom. God gave him wealth. And guess what? The one he didn't even ask, God killed all his enemies, all of them. Both Shemai, both, all of them. Cleared every, gave him peace round about four years. His whole life, there was no battle. Israel never fought one battle during the life of Solomon because of the way he started his reign. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you're hearing, Sam, hear it. If you're hearing, Sam, hear it all. So, sacrifice, sacrificial thanksgiving, silences words. Controversies in first Kings chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. That's the scripture. So you can go and do your study. Number five, it ends misfortune. It closes the door to unpleasant situations. You know, Noah had just come out of a flood that killed everybody he knew, all his friends, all his neighbors, all his colleagues. All he had was his family, even their houses, everything damaged. What did he do? He took the best that was available, several of all the clean animals, and he took it to the altar and sacrificed it. And when God smelled that good, wonderful savor, in the book of Genesis chapter 8, verse 14, all the way to Genesis chapter 9 to 2, but especially in Genesis chapter 9, verse 17, God passed a decree. And say, I will never destroy man by flooding again. 
So how do you close the door to an unpleasant experience? Someone say sacrifice. Someone say sacrifice. Oh. Sacrificial word. Thanks. That's how you close the door. So you've been having serial miscarriages, you can close that door. You've been having disappointments, you can close that door. You've been having near success syndrome, you can close that door. If somebody hear what I'm saying, if you're hearing, son, hear it. Hear it. You've been having sicknesses of you can close that door today. Today. That's a, it's not an event, it's not religion, it's revelation. Someone say revelation. You can close it today or this week. But between now and the end of the world, as God gives you the substance, He closed that door to destruction. He closed the permanent. He closed the permanent. If you are hearing me, Sam, you hear me. It has happened a lot. We've seen it in the lives of so many people. Shut down controversies of sickness. Shut down. I've seen people that shut down serial miscarriages by sacrifice. Shut down the terrible things caused by ancestral causes by sacrifice. I bring you this revelation today. You can close that door. Tell everybody you can close that door. That. So if the year has not been good for you, if there's anybody that needs to thank God, it's you. And you need to do it what? Sacrificial. So that you can end that experience. Because this year that you are complaining, do you know many people have built houses? Some have bought the best cars. Some have touched the highest money there. This year that you are complaining, I've touched the highest money I've ever touched before this year. This year that you are complaining. I think some of you should be checking sometimes your account statement. Maybe you know what enters your life. I looked at mine yesterday, we needed to do something. I was like, wow, just this month? And I'm complaining. You know, the economy has made us want to know what, what enters our hand again. Because of devaluation. You can change that circumstance. If somebody hear me, if you're hearing me, so I'm hearing you. No matter what the doctors, maybe they say you have HIV, maybe they say you have cancer, you can end it. If they say you don't have time to leave, you can end it. A woman came to um, out of the Shambhat, no, A.A. Allen's meeting. The child had 26 illnesses, 26 major illnesses. He was deaf, dumb, blind, the tongue was sticking out, was paralyzed, all oh, crazy stuff. The last day of the meeting, the last thing they had that would have taken them home, the woman carried it. Was a call for the offering. She ran like a thunderbolt to the altar and dropped it. Because the man of God has the power of sacrificial giving. And when she finished, she went back. The assistant pastor knew her story. They had been trying to get the man of God to pray for them throughout the program. It was not possible. He knew her story. He knew what they were going to do. He knew that that thing she put was their last card. Guess what? After putting that, God redirected the service. Because it was the way A.A. Allen operated. As he worshipped, he entered visions. He said, I don't know, but I'm going to a certain house. I'm seeing a child born. And when he was born, he was put in a basket because he was formless. Blind, deaf, dumb, paralyzed, tongues hanging out. Is this a baby or a beast? Then he said, and I see that child growing a bit. Then some days ago, I see a woman carrying that child in the child because they were in another city. Yeah, I see them getting the big backlogs of this program. And that woman and that child are here. He said, where's the baby? Bring her down, the baby will be healed. And he called it corrupted him. Tell you about God is God, though. I don't care who is on your case, whether it's the governor, whether it's the president, God can interrupt them. Tell them God can interrupt them. God can change things. I've found in this case here now, a man that was being owned by the government was about 25 million. 
and we finish praying for him. You know the way civil service occurs at the end of the year, the people that are in charge of money are very happy to return it. I don't know, but they say they used to give them a percentage. Me, I don't know. Because I've seen our CMD do it once. They are going on salary. The man collected the thing and returned it. And I was wondering, this man, okay. I don't know, I heard. But guess what? They had closed accounts. But after God intervened, they opened the account again and paid them money. Tell your neighbor, what God is God, though. God can intervene. And the assistant pastor, that was Al Shabi, Al Dabu Shabba, ran, collected the woman's baby, and ran and put it in the hand of the other. That baby dropped his hand. I opened, Pia, the ear opened, Pia, the tongue that was hanging out went back inside, Pia, the hand straightened, the leg straightened, 26 major illnesses was healed instantly by the power of sin. Look, and you cannot give peace God what? Give it. It's a book, it's in the market, I'm not telling you what happened. It's in the market, that's the title of the book, you can't give God what? You can't have give God, God is a king. You know, when you come to a king's place and give him gifts, if you give him more than he gives you where you are going, you are sure you have more dominion than him. So every king wants to maintain his pride. So no matter what you give them, they will do what? They will outgive you. What is the story of the, um, what's her name? Queen of Sheba. She came with a lot of things. But what Solomon gave her, Bam Puzula, the man who needed to show her, I'm still the king of what? Kings. That's the way God operates. Is somebody here what I'm saying? Try God. Tell everyone, try God though. And you will see him do mighty things for you and everybody say amen. Amen. Number six, Thanksgiving brings breakthrough. Whether it's healing, different miracles, whatever you need, he will bring you a breakthrough. Second Chronicles chapter 20, 17 to 25. You see God breaking through for Jehoshaphat as he offered sacrifice of praise. God embarrassed all their enemies and pushed the three nations. They killed themselves and the people enjoy all the benefits. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Psalm 50 verse 14 to 15. Can you pull it up? Psalm 50 verse 14 to 15. Please very fast. Psalm 50 verse 14 to 15. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Yes, verse 15. And call upon me in the day of what? Trouble. And I will what? Deliver thee. And thou shalt what? Glorify me. See, thanksgiving gives you a license to call upon God anytime. When you have thanked God for this year, you can't end the year badly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you have thanked God for 2023, it can't be otherwise. It must end well. If somebody is hearing me, I'm hearing you. Yes, it must end well. No matter what the devil is trying to do, you need to be reversed. Somebody here, things are being reversed for your sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. The last one is that Thanksgiving consolidates your victory. It maintains your healing, it maintains your deliverance. In the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 26 to 30. Jehoshaphat and the people, they give thanks in the valley of Beraka and all the way to Jerusalem. They thank God, they praise Him, they bless Him. And the Bible said, and God gave Jehoshaphat rest round about. He never fought another battle throughout his reign because of that one season of thanksgiving. You can give yourself peace. You can give yourself peace. Peace in your office, peace in your neighborhood, peace round about. Not this one, you have breakthrough today, you have breakdown tomorrow. Open door tomorrow, you have closed door tomorrow, the next tomorrow. Thanksgiving can sustain every You know why people are losing their miracles? People are losing their miracles because they don't thank God. But as you thank God, God will maintain your miracle. And everybody say, Amen. Praise the Lord. What attitude should you thank God with? An attitude of joy, gratitude, generosity, promptness, wholeheartedness, and humility. And let's wrap up this way. Psalm 126. 
What kind of thanksgiving is God asking us to do this year? This year is different. It's a sacrificial thanksgiving. Someone say sacrificial thanksgiving. Something you will feel, it will pain you, it will hurt you, but it will do something that will be unusual for you. Psalm 126, verse 1 says, When God turned the captivity of them, we were like them that dreamt. And then our mouth was filled with laughter. And they said among the nations that the Lord has been good to them. And the people confirm that the Lord has been good to them. Then he said, Turn our captivities again like the streams of the Negev. Then he says, They that sow in tears shall reap words in joy. He said, He that goes forth in tears, bearing the seed, shall doubtless come back with what? With joy, bringing in the sheep. Whenever you thank God sacrificially, God will grant you a proper harvest that will blow your mind. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If you're hearing me, Sam, I'm hearing you. Yes, sir. If you're hearing me, Sam, I'm hearing you. Yes, say, Pastor Biora, how do you know that there's something like that for your home study? Go and read one, Psalm 107, verse 22. Psalm 116, verse 17. Amos chapter 4, verse 5. And Jonah chapter 2, verse 10. But well, let's close with Psalm 107, verse 22. God always commands his people to thank him sacrificially. Sacrificially. Don't give carelessly. Don't give something that means nothing to you. No. Thank God sacrificially. And the Lord will honor you. The Lord will bless you. Can we stand on our feet? And can we read the scripture together? I want to go. And let us sacrifice the sacrifice of what thanksgiving and declare his works with what with rejoicing. Then verse 23. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor that's what God is commanding you to do. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands. Thank God for this year. Start from January. Begin to bless him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord.
right now. And so we have to go to some places in the night for ministry. Thank you. You do not allow any evil to come upon us. Thank you. Thank you for resigning our children, keeping them from harm, keeping them from sickness, keeping them from disease. This year, none of our children was hospitalized. Thank you. Just talk your own and tell him I'm saying my own. Father, we honor you. I honor you. I praise you. I bless you. I bless you. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you for strength. Drop my tail as a chief resident. Thank you for the victories you gave us in the department. Thank you for the high level of passes in the exams. Thank you. All the marriages, all the good things. Thank you for peace. Thank you for wisdom to govern your people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the grace as a zonal pastor. Thank you for all the work you've done in this zone this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to bring blessing to multitudes. Thank you. Thank you for all the members you've given us this year. Wonderful men and women. We honor you. We bless you. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. 